well, welcome back to my channel. If I could talk, that would be good. Or welcome. If it is your first time, I'm going to be doing a full face of the cheapest makeup in my collection. Some of this is new. I just did a video where I hauled some stuff from Walmart and the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to be using some of the Dollar Tree items Today, I have a blush and a bronzer and a highlighter from Dollar Tree, so we'll use those. And then everything else, I pulled out what I thought was probably the cheapest or one of the cheapest things. I didn't look up the prices of all of these. I can do that at the end and leave a total down below if you want, but I didn't like Google everything. I just, out of what I had, I figured that was the cheapest. The only thing that I don't have a cheap dupe for is my brow wax. I only have one and mine is from ABH. So I'm going to use that because in order to do the more natural fluffy brow, I have to use that product. And again, that being the only one that I have, I'm just going to pull that in. So hopefully that's all right. If this is interesting, stick around. We're going to jump into it right now. I do think I own an e.l.f. brow kit where it's like a couple of brow powders and a wax, but that is in my like new overflow box and I did not feel like digging that out just for this one video because I've been happy with this. So we're just going to have that be the only like product that's not affordable. That and mascara, all of my mascaras are high end. So I'm going to use my Uma one because they do this brand does have a sister brand that's drugstore so i'll put that in but mascaras i get them in subscription boxes. i haven't bought mascara for years i either get them in subscription boxes or my mom gives me my mom buys clinique so she very often will give me mascara occasionally i wear false lashes when i do my makeup so i'm one of those i don't care about mascara so that is the only thing that i didn't buy for this i should have got one at the dollar tree I didn't, so I apologize. I have my skincare on, and we're going to jump into primer. I have two that I got out that are affordable. This is the Hard Candy Hydrating Primer. I actually like this better than the e.l.f. because it's not as sticky. The Gripping Primer. And then I have my Rimmel Stay Matte. I do have the e.l.f., the green one, the Gripping Primer, and I have the Cookies and Dream those are all going to be affordable. I haven't used these in a while, so I pulled this one out. I'm going to use this gripping one just on my nose. This is not anywhere near as sticky as the e.l.f. one. I have trouble with that green one, and I've had a few of you tell me that it either like looks really good or it looks goopy like it does on me too, so it's not just me. I did have one of you tell me that the pink one is a little less sticky than the green one. So I need to make a decision if I want to buy that. Because if I buy that, then the green one needs to go to my new home. Which it could. But since I already have it, it's one of those things where I'm just trying to make it work. Now normally this Rimmel Stay Matte I just use on my nose. But it says it's slightly pore filling. Um, smoothing it says it has smoothing abilities so I figured I would try it on my whole face I'm not somebody that needs it for the mattifying but if it's gonna smooth I need that because the texture of my skin's been awful since before I had surgery so I'm just gonna put it in the areas where my texture is bad which is my texture is not bad in my forehead. I just tend generally tend to do smoothing. Um, I get a little bit of texture right here, but I have lines in my forehead. So I try to put it there, but my texture is really bad here and then kind of around in my chin lately. So we'll try it all over the face because I normally do not use this like that. So we'll give that a whirl. If anybody has been curious, I think I may have found a dupe for the Urban Decay Pore Smoothing Primer that I absolutely loved. This is from L'Oreal. It's a Magic Perfecting Base. The texture, it comes in a pot instead of a pump, which I don't love, but the texture, this feels very, very close, and it's the same color. Doesn't have a smell. The Urban Decay one had a little bit of a fragrance to it, but... 
I haven't tried this on my face, but just feeling it on the back of my hand, this is very, very close. So I'm going to use this in an upcoming video. I have another L'Oreal one coming in the mail, but so far, this seems like this is going to be the closest. I think it's just way less because the Urban Decay one came in a giant pump. But if that works, I don't mind repurchasing it. I try and let the primer sit for a little bit before I go in. And we're going to use the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. I have this one. I don't have my e.l.f. CC cream anymore. Mine got old and I decluttered it and it was a little bit dark. I also have the tinted moisturizer from ColourPop, but I think this one is cheaper. This one comes under $5, I believe. And I just use it with a brush. I used this LYS foundation brush the other day and I actually really liked it. So we'll use this again today. I used it in a video where I test was testing out some new stuff. This has some pretty good coverage. I want to say the color pop one does too. I'm used to using my pure one, which is very, very light coverage, which is funny because it's expensive. That's like a $40 tinted moisturizer, but... This is super affordable and it actually, you can build this up to pretty like medium if you wanted to. I don't. And then if you wanted even sheer, you could go in with a beauty sponge and that would sheer it out some. I just do the one little squirt and just spread it out. I've gotten in the habit of using brushes with the tinted moisturizers just because it's going to give you a little bit more coverage but this one's actually got a fair amount of coverage and mine's in the shade light which I think is pretty good for me it's got a little bit more color than my skin tone but if I have to go either a hair lighter or a hair darker I'm going to want to go a hair darker just because it doesn't make me washed out but yeah this has really good coverage so this is a good even a foundation option at the drugstore that's affordable it was hard to pick products because i don't have a ton of drugstore in complexion products unfortunately so and that's not for any particular reason. It just kind of is what it is. So I do have for concealer, I do have the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo. Another alternative, I do own the Maybelline Magic Erase. I think this is closer to 10 though. This is at 6 or $7, I think. And then I have a couple of the NYX, which again, these... Everything is like around $10. It's really hard to find stuff under that. Wet and Wild makes some stuff. I just don't have anything. So I think I have two shades here. I have Light Sand and Fair. I got a new one, but I didn't end up getting the same shade that I had before, which is fine. Some of my stuff is getting old. We'll use a little bit of this. I think this is actually my right shade. The other one I had was a little bit too light, not too light, but borderline too light. So I might go in with a little bit of this just to brighten. We'll see. I think the light sand is going to be pretty good, like as far as a skin tone shade. I have a hard time getting concealers. Like when I go online, I end up getting stuff that's way too light. Which, when you're using that for your under eye and you're trying to cover dark circles, it's not going to cover darkness if it's too light. It's too much of a contrast. You need to get a little closer to actually conceal. If you're just using it for brightening, that would be a different story. But if it's way too light, it's going to not cover if that makes sense properly. This seems like this is okay. 
I, th I don't think that looks too dark under my eyes. It did a little bit when I had it plopped out, but it doesn't, at least on camera, it doesn't look like it's too, too dark. It seems like it's a good shade match. Yeah, I had a little bit too light of a shade. I'm very fair, but I'm not, I've discovered the most fair one could be because there's many shades and a lot of things like my ColourPop concealer is way light. I do have a ColourPop concealer. I'm going to use just a hair of this just to brighten in a couple of spots. I like to do the spotlighting, which you want to put light kind of down in the center of your face which is generally what I use my light concealers for. Or like you saw, you can go in and you can lighten the shade if you need to. I have a couple that are, I have a Makeup Revolution one too that's very, very light. I generally use it for cut creases because it's so light. It's borderline white. Okay, so I'm gonna let this kind of hang out. I've been trying to do this thing where I saw a pro tip where she said, and I've talked about this in videos before, so if I'm repeating myself, I apologize, but let it kind of hang out because concealer is going to crease. If you've got any kind of lines and it's meant to kind of set itself, if you go in with powder too soon, you can cause more creasing. So I've been trying to let it kind of hang out, let it crease, go in and pat it out, which is what this lady recommended. She's, I think, closer to 50. She's a pro makeup artist I started following her on TikTok but that was one of her recommendations so I've been trying to do that and it's actually been working pretty well I have not experienced as much creasing let me get a couple of powder brushes since I started doing that okay maybe I'll leave that down here so we're gonna let that kind of just hang out for a little bit I'm gonna put the concealers back and then we'll move on to I have some like cream contour cream blush make sure these brushes are clean because I had an issue I filmed to get ready the other day and my contour looked muddy and I think my brush had leftover product in it and nothing super clean so I'm pretty sure that's what was happening but I do have this pro Concealer from LA Girl. These are under $5. I bought this. I had two shades, and I think I decluttered one because the other shade looked too warm. This is in the shade Toffee. So I'm going to use this as like a cream contour. I've never, I opened it the other day. I've never used this. I've had this for a while. These were really popular to use for cream contour for a long time. And then there's so much, I think, on the market that these kind of fell off. Like, I don't really hear anybody talking about using these so much anymore. But this is technically a concealer. I just have it in a suitable shade for contouring. So we're going to try that. I do have the Flower Beauty one and one from Hard Candy. But I'm pretty sure that that one is going to be the the cheapest I again I didn't look it up but like I said I'm pretty sure LA girl has really affordable products and I want to say that that is under five dollars for that and I've never used it so we're getting a new like first impression here I said these were all the rage and I have a towel so I can wipe off excess if I need to, because technically this is a concealer. So it, it's gonna cover differently than just a cream bronzer on its own would theoretically. So I'm just spreading it out a little bit. because I didn't really even use that much, but again, this is a concealer. So you're gonna get some coverage from it and that could be why people stopped I'm pretty sure I got too much here on my forehead so I'm gonna go and like 
spread this out where I like blobbed it around and then you can see all the excess product that I've wiped off the brush. I went in with a little too much because I'm used, I've gotten used to the actual like cream bronzers. But again, when you're dealing with a concealer, yeah, this towel, usually I reuse the makeup towel several times. That's going to have to go in the hamper to, today when I'm done. But a concealer is nice, like if you have some problem areas or like because we went in with such a light coverage complexion product, sometimes it's nice. And then I'm just taking my brush that I used with the concealer and kind of going around, make sure we've got a soft edge. And we're going to put powder over this too, so this will tone itself down a little bit. I like to set my whole face so this won't look quite so crazy when I'm done but I think that looks good like I said I've had that forever I bought those like two years ago and I ended up decluttering one because I wasn't sure about the shade and then this I think is good for a bronzer the other shade I had was definitely cooler so it would have been better for a contour but Obviously, I don't need both because it's been a long time that I've had that. I'm going to try and clean this brush off because I think I'm going to use a little bit. I'm going to fold this or this for the more matte bronzer when we get to that point. And then I do have... We'll use this cream blush. This one's from Profusion. Again, these are under $5. I haven't used this shade before. This is in the shade Rose, and I'm just gonna do like a dot and a dot. This is pretty light. This is just gonna give me a little bit of a base. The Bellini shade that I have, I have used that before. I just figured I would give this a little bit of a try because it's here and again this helps give you a little bit of a base for the other cheek products so I'm just gonna do just a little bit very very light but again if you want a good liquid blush these profusion ones I'm pretty sure are still under five dollars that is not the blush jar I'm trying to put it in with the contour that'll get lost in there forever and I'll never know what happened to it. And then this is a dress-up brush. I love this for cream blush. This came in a set, but you can get dress-up brushes on Amazon and they're pretty affordable. I like them better than Morphe. Not that there's anything wrong with Morphe, but okay. So we have a little bit of creasing. I don't know if I want to use the brush, but like I said, that you're going to get a little bit concealer is going to crease. If you got any kind of line situation, I don't think there's a such a thing as a completely creaseless. Okay. So I, we patted it out. It's kind of had a chance to hang out. I'm going to go in with the Rimmel Stay Matte. This is like $3 and some change. So this is one of the cheapest powders you can get. There might be another one because I was watching Emily Noel the other day and she does a lot of drugstore. She found another powder and I could not tell you what brand it was that was cheaper than this. So there is another one at Walmart that's less expensive. I think it was in her spring like makeup bag for beginners video. I had it playing in the background. Because normally she'll use this as her cheapest powder. And I did get this to test. I got this in a CoverGirl one. Because I don't really have a pressed powder that I love necessarily. I do like the number 7 one. But I was trying to find a number 7 stuff's kind of pricey. So I was trying to find another powder that I could use instead of using that one all the time. I like this one so far. I think I like this one a little better than the CoverGirl. The CoverGirl is one of their clean, fresh ones that comes in the pink packaging. Who 
Who was I watching? Kelly Ghosh recommends that one. Or she at least has used that enough that she's doing like a project pan. So I got that one and this one. I think I'm probably going to end up repurchasing the number seven at some point. But so far, these are good. And like I said, the Rimmel stuff comes in at under four dollars because i have one of their bronzers too if you're looking for an affordable bronzer that's not like the dollar tree the nat i have what's mine in sunlight they have a couple of different shades of this and this again is like three bucks so i'll throw that one out there if you don't want to use the rimmel and then i'm going to go in that's set pretty good. I'm just going to use a little bit of the Revolution Skin Finish in Opalescent. This is a drugstore alternative to like a MAC Skin Finish or like the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. And this, I've got a pretty big dip in this. I was using this a lot for a long time and then I kind of stopped because I have a couple of soft highlighters. I have one from Fenty that does the same thing and then I have a glow powder from Too Faced I've been trying to use up but this I don't know if Makeup Revolution still sells this but this is affordable another alternative to this I did pull it out the Halo Glow Powder from e.l.f. this is not as cheap I don't think as the Revolution one but this again is going to give you a glowy a little bit of a glowy look to the skin Okay, and I, for setting sprays, I think the only drugstore one I own currently is the e.l.f., which again, e.l.f. is not as cheap as it used to be. This, I think, is a $10, which at that price range, I like the Milani, the regular one, the mattifying one. That one helps makeup last I will say this is a good alternative to the Urban Decay All Nighter. I go in twice with just my powder and then I will spray it again at the end. But this is a good dupe. I did buy a second one of these because it is cheaper than the Urban Decay All Nighter. It works just as good. But the Milani, the regular, the original, they have an illuminating one and I never tried that one. But the Milani one is a good alternative to the All Nighter too if you're wanting a good drugstore spray. So let's, yeah, I've definitely had less issues with creasing. I'm gonna try and do my brows off camera and I'll come right back. Okay, so I went in, I did use a little bit of the NYX brow pen, which this is at $11. But the other one I used is the Maybelline Tattoo Studio where this one's got like the fork. I did most of it with this and this one comes in at nine. These brow pens are just a little bit expensive. They do work really well. I ended up having to go in with the NYX one too just a little bit. And I feel like I need to do a little bit more in the front here because I feel like one side's... I'm just now started not doing like the block brow so these are the only products that I can really use to get the hair like strokes so I can't go super affordable with it I did go in with a little bit of the Maybelline skinny brow pencil just in the beginning and then instead of using my ABH clear brow gel I did use the profusion one that I own so I tried to make it a little bit affordable but it's just one of those things for me with as little as I have to start with I've got to just use what works and unfortunately that's a little bit more of, of expensive products so I apologize for that. So let's go to the bronzers. Let's try this one. Now it did have some white like overspray. So hopefully with the brush I can get through. This claims that it's glowy, but this looked less, there's definitely some pigment there. This looked less glowy 
than the other one so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this as like the contour and then we'll blend it out with the other one because this is how I do it anyway I was hoping this would smell a little bit more vanilla -y. like I said it does have a smell and it's not bad but it's definitely not claims it's cupcake I wouldn't definitely wouldn't say that but it seems like it's I mean it's giving me a little bit the bronzers, they did have a bunch of deep ones. I was thankful to find a couple things that were my skin tone that would work. And then let's go in with this other one. And this one is just in the shade bronze. And then it has that little baby brush in there that nobody can do anything with. Except for maybe eyeshadow. The ones that were a little bit deeper came in, it was still LA color, but they came in a bigger rectangle flat pan. So they definitely have some color options for the bronzers and it's given me bronzed. And this is actually, these are both good shades for my skin tone. So that's good. Those are both nice. I'll actually leave that. I don't know if that matte one will fit in my little thing right there in front. I used to not have a bunch of bronzers. Now I have too many. I probably need to go through my drawer. Okay, four. I'm going to do the highlighter first and then we'll go in with the blush. This is just Cloud 9. It's from Ion. It doesn't have a shade. It says written in the stars. I don't know. That could be the shade. It just says face highlight. And then on the front, it just says highlight. So it's a champagne gold. It comes in a little magnetic cardboard package which is nice the color looks good they did like I said they had a rose gold one in the LA colors like rectangular packaging but that was way too dark for me and this is a pretty like champagne color I didn't want to just buy stuff just for this video I tried to pick stuff that if it was good would be stuff that I would like use. So I didn't want to get a highlighter in a shade that I wouldn't. I generally do more champagne -y colors. And I it's it's highlighting. I can see it. It doesn't really have a lot of a base color because this is actually pretty light. It looks more light than I'm used to just because my uh, tinted moisture is, was a little bit dark. But if you can find a shade that works... I think that looks nice. And then we'll try the blush. And again, this is in Berry Plum. They had three shades of blush that looked like they worked. So I just grabbed all three. This is a really pretty color. And I'm just going in with my e.l.f. I like to do highlighter first before blush. I just feel like I get a better blend. And then generally I do a glowy, where is this, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's matte matte, more of a satin, which is nice. I just feel like I personally get a better blend with the highlight when I go in with the blush second. So I just do it in this order for personal preference. You can definitely do the highlighter last, which is what most people do. And occasionally I will do it if I get off track and I'm not paying attention just putting a little bit on my nose my chin very very pretty color so yeah if you can get a hold of some of these LA colors blushes at the Dollar Tree I would pick them up because they seem really nice do a little bit in the temples very very pretty okay we're gonna spray one more time here I do have an eyeshadow palette. This is a Wet n Wild color icon. This is one of the 10 pans. This is gonna run about 10 bucks. I do have the e.l.f., a bunch of the bite-sized, which I think are four or five dollars. The prices of everything keep going up. Those used to be 
like three dollars i don't think that they're three dollars anymore so you can get a lot i think in the four five six seven dollar price range i have one of the four pan from hard candy that's about five dollars i'm just trying to get some of the brow products off let me prime and i'll do one eye and then we'll do the other eye okay i'll just do both eyes on camera i primed using the gerard clean canvas which that runs about ten dollars if you get it on sale and that might be the price that it is now because i know when i repurchased this it was only 10 whereas the ulta eye primer is 12 the milani i think was nine or ten also so it seems like that's kind of around the price. And I did get a brand new like NYX glitter glue. So we're going to use that. Which the NYX glitter glue is cheaper than some of the eyeshadow primer. So the price of the Gerard Clean Canvas is not any more than anything else. So if you don't want to get that, I would just do concealer. Yeah, because I was looking at the prices of primers, and it's it's not that cheap. Or not, you know, stuff's not that cheap. The Gerard is pretty comparable. You just can't get it at the drugstore is the only difference. So we're going to use this. There are cheaper eyeshadows that I own. I've never used this. This still had the sticker on it. So we're going to try this today. I am going to go in with this green color that's in here first, and then I might deepen it up a little bit, but we'll try just the green. And my eyeshadow is not set. I feel like you get the most pigmentation without setting it, so I don't ever do that. If you prefer to set your eyeshadow... You can use just, you know, a translucent powder. This doesn't have a light matte cream shade. Some of the Wet n Wild palettes do. But yeah, you can just go in with some translucent powder. That is going to be a completely, like, personal preference thing. So I got a little bit of the green in there, and I'm just going to clean the brush off. And I'm just blending the edge. And then I think I might go in with a little bit of that gray shade. Same brush. I don't tend to use a bunch of different brushes. I will occasionally if I'm doing a like a fancy look. But I'm pretty lazy. I try to get done what I can with one or two just because when I'm doing my makeup in like real time and I'm just dipping into the green a little bit um I don't always have time to sit here and use you know 10 brushes I'm gonna go back in with the gray this isn't obviously super in-depth tutorial I'm just putting the shadow on trying to see I think this is fine. I've been kind of an eyeshadow snob for a lot of years, and I just took a little bit of the green just into the gray, just a little bit right there in that front part. But I think this is good. I'm going to say drugstore eyeshadow has come a lot farther. I'm just taking a little bit of the green right there in that top section. Just to blend that out. We're going a little bit smoky and dramatic i'm not gonna put maybe i'll try a little bit of the black just on this smaller brush just to see initial pigmentation is good is it the best black that i've ever used probably not but it's definitely a lot better than some that i've tried lately blend that into the green I don't think that looks bad at all and then I'm going to take a little bit more of the green just on this fluffy brush up here 
If you want it super dramatic, just go in with the wet base and do the black first. That's going to give you the most pigment off of the black. So let's put some glitter glue on the lid. Everything is dirty. At some point, I'll clean brushes. I don't know when that will be. My glitter glue, my tube that I've, I've had for years because I use such small amount and I don't do my makeup every day. And even when I was, I used such a small amount that, yeah, I've had that tube for a couple of years and I figured it was probably time to replace it. And it was only like $5.99 at Walmart. It's cheaper than some of the eyeshadow primer. I know the Milani one was more than that. I'm going to go in with this duo chromey shade right here. I don't know what any of these colors are called. They don't have names. So it's... It's not a glitter. This feels pretty hard pressed. Am I picking anything up? I might have to dig in there with a brush. I was able to get through. Through, I had to kind of rub in there for a minute. It's definitely a different texture than the other shimmers, so I had to kind of work my finger in there a little bit. And I'll go back over it with a brush, but that's pretty. I don't have complaints at all about that. It's a little bit thicker of a formula. It's a little crumbly. So just be careful going in with the brush because you will prop like that kind of a shade as much as I'm having to work in to pick it up is going to crumble off like it did a little bit. So you're going to get a little bit of fallout from that color probably if you're having to use a brush. So just be aware. I don't care if I have glitter on my cheeks. It doesn't really bother me. I don't tend to do my eyes first very often. Every once in a while I will and it ends up throwing me off because I've gotten so used to doing my face first. It feels weird not to have any eye makeup on. I'm just, I didn't add any additional product. I think there was a little bit of green on this. I'm just going up to make sure this is blended. And then we do have a champagne -y color in here that I think will work under the brow. I don't know. This is just a pencil brush. That is silver. Don't go into that shade. And then I'll go back in with the fluffy brush just to kind of make sure those two are blended. And the silver that's in here is pretty. I'm going to go in with the pencil brush in that shade in the inner corner. I don't think that's bad at all. I like the shade that is on my lid a lot. There's stuff from my eye. I did get a little bit of fallout from it. I could see it crumbling down, but I think it the eye look is pretty. I was trying to see if I had a color to kind of sandwich in between the two. I don't think that I do, so I'm gonna just take a little bit more of the green just on that flat brush and bring it in a little bit more kind of in here and then flip my brush over. I don't think the blend is bad by any means. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more of this. It doesn't have much of a colored base, so it's nice I can bring it over the green to kind of make that green a little bit shimmery right there. But it's got enough that I think it looks fine on the lid just as it is. And then lower lash line. There's kind of a pewter shade in here. We'll try that on some sort of a flat or a brush. I prefer to do a shimmer on the lower lash line just because my eyes run a lot. 
and shimmers for me hold up better because they can be used wet. Most metallics and shimmers can be used wet. So they tend to look a little better under my eyes when they start to run for that reason. That's the only reason that I do that. And then I'm just going to go in with the matte gray that we used in the crease on a fluffier brush. And then I think I'm going to take a little bit more of that silver on the lower lash line. And then I might do a little bit of the green here in this outer part, just on top of what we did to kind of help marry the two. But that's a pretty like, I think everyday look. Go back in with that pencil brush and that silvery color and bring it inward on the bottom a little bit. And I blend, I smoke out my lower lash pretty far down again because it kind of helps conceal the lines that I've got going on under there. I think that was, I think that was good. I know Wet n Wild, I've heard a lot of good things about their palettes in general. I think I have this one and I might have one of the smaller ones. I have to look down in my drawer. I don't remember. I remember looking at their little like four or five pan ones, but I can't remember if I actually bought one or not. I'm going to use the Makeup Revolution liner. Um, I'll use the mascara. I'm going to put some lashes on and then I'll come back when it's okay. I'm just fiddling with my lashes, but these are a pack of, let me see if I can get the pack. I got them on Amazon. They're half lash is what they're fan -ic. I, I don't know. There's the name. But they're a half lash. I got a multi-pack. I'm still on the first pair. And I will reuse these until the end of time. So those are what I've been using to film. And they're pretty. Like, I don't have to cut them. They come to about here. I have small eyes, so it fills up. Like, you could do... I think there's a smaller version than a half if you need something smaller. Or you could trim these. But they work pretty good. They did have good lashes at the Dollar Tree. They looked pretty. I just don't need them. Like I said, I bought this multi-pack on Amazon. So you can go pretty cheap. And then I'm testing out one of those liner glues. So I put the Makeup Revolution liner on. And then I put the liner glue on top on my lid. And then the glue I've been using is... I think Kiss makes it. It's a super strong hold in black. And then I also have, I got a new duo brush on. I use the Kiss strip lash glue sometimes too. But I think Kiss, yeah, Kiss makes the brand of this. But they did have glue. They did have liner glue like this and regular lash glue at the Dollar Tree. So, and it was in that Ion brand. So if you're needing glue you can try that. And then I just have a case that I keep the lashes in. So I didn't buy any of the lashes. I did end up buying a pair of that like about face brand just because they were colored. I thought that might be fun, but yeah, I like this palette. Like I said, you can get a lot of drugstore eyeshadow now, kind of in, you know, the $10 range five dollar range there isn't much at three because I don't think the elf ones are three dollars anymore I think they're four or five it seems like the prices of everything are going up which is why I think the dollar trees have started carrying more stuff because people are looking there now because things are so expensive and then for lips I have a couple of ColourPop lip oils. Let me just use the one. This is from the Mandalorian set and I got this on sale. It came with a, a colored one and a clear one and they do still sell this. I don't, like I said, I got it less than whatever it's normally priced at because it was on sale. Doesn't smell like anything. I used it a couple of times. I heard people complain that the ColourPop lip products expire quickly. I've heard that they're like foundations and stuff do too, which is why I've been trying to use my pretty fresh moisturizer. I've had that for two years and mine is still good. 
Now granted it's stored here, it's not in direct sunlight. We keep the house pretty even temperatured because I know the foundation that I had before that expired after like years. So I've been trying to use the tinted moisturizer when I film most of the time. So just be aware about some of the ColourPop stuff while it is affordable. Some of the stuff I've heard expires quickly. So just FYI, that's the the colored one. There's an, I didn't put a lip liner. Din Jardin. I haven't seen the Mandalorian, so I I just bought those because they were cheap and I liked the clear glitter one and the color of this. I didn't buy it for the Star Wars packaging. But anyways, that is the full face of affordable makeup. Let me know what you guys thought. I like how everything turned out. I think the blush, bronzer, everything looks nice. The hydrator looks good. So yeah, I'm happy with this makeup. I'm going to leave it on. I was going to take it off and do something else, but I think I'm just going to leave it on. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me. Hope this wasn't too boring. Let me know what you guys thought because I definitely can do more get readies, testing out new stuff because I have a bunch of new stuff to use. So yeah, thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and hopefully I will see you in another video very, very soon. Hello, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome for the first time. We are going to be doing a Walmart haul because I just picked up an order and then I actually ran over to the Dollar Tree the other day because I've been seeing people do makeup, do videos with makeup from the dollar store. So I found a couple of things at Dollar Tree that'll work for me and I got some new things to try from Walmart. So if you want to see what I got, stick around. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already so you don't miss out on new videos. I've been posting three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So you'll definitely want to stick around for that. I do a lot of unboxings and I have a horror subscription coming. So that should be good. So yeah, let's jump into the okay. video. I have to go online and look and see. I signed up for... It's not through Loot Fright. It's another company, but it's a quarterly horror subscription, so I'll get it four times a year. So I thought that might be better than getting it every month, just because when you get stuff like that every month, it becomes too much stuff, and then I run out of places to put things. But I did miss getting a horror box, so we're going to try the one that's coming. I'll look up the company and try and link it down below and I need to look and see when they're shipping it because it should be shipping this month. So fingers crossed that that works out. I have my coffee here still. I have some water. So hopefully that doesn't bother you if, if I sit and drink it. It's like 10 o'clock. We got up, went to Walmart. We had a pickup order and then we had to go in and get some stuff because I get wick for the kids. So I had to get like the formula and some produce and stuff in the store. And then the big items we do through pickup. But anyway, I actually ran over to Dollar Tree yesterday. I actually went out by myself. I had surgery recently, so I have not been driving. So I did actually go out by myself because it wasn't very far from the house. I got this angled liner brush from elf they had this because i did get um unearthly cosmetics liner brush because i have this um not in the mood it's one of those water activated liner palettes from unearthly so i thought having an extra liner brush would be good because i do have a couple of gel liners too i have a couple from melt and I have a couple of single water activated liners. So I thought having another brush would be good because I don't, I have some lip liner brushes, but I use them for doing cut creases. And I think I have, I may have one other actual like skinny liner brush like that in here somewhere. Here's one. This is from Medusa's Makeup and I actually like, it looks a little bit weird. It's a little bit chubby for a liner brush, but I actually like this just for doing black. Um, I need to set these aside so that they don't get lost. And there's one other skinny one in here. I saw it the other day. So I figured this, I don't have an angled one. And this was only $1.25. So I figured I would get this one too. I have them kind of sticking up where my lip products go just for right now. Because I need to get some sort of separate container for them because things get lost in with my eye brushes. I lose my brow brush all the time and I generally put them in front. 
and I have two that I use all the time and they constantly get lost. Anyways, let's go through the rest of this. I got this bronzer. It says it's got a glow, but it doesn't look as glowy as the one from LA Colors. So I think I can use this together because I like to go in with more of a matte, either contour or bronzer, and then blend it out with a shimmer if you've not been here before. So this one looks a little bit more matte. It says it's glowy, but it does not look as shimmery as the other one. And this is cupcake scented. I guess I'm going to open all this stuff because I'm going to film with it at some point. I didn't get any complexion products from the Dollar Tree. Everything was really dark. I live in an area where it's predominantly Hispanic, so I've run into that for years and years here. It does have a smell, but I wouldn't say it smells like a cupcake. It kind of has a, like that coconutty Tropicana smell, but let's swatch this. Some of this is overspray. So right now I'm just getting the overspray off the sprinkles, but I'll try and dip a brush in there and see what we can do. And then I did get another bronzer from LA Color, and this is just in the shade bronze, but this did look pretty like shimmery, more so compared to the other one. Well, I'll try and open this stuff later. So there's that one. So we'll be here forever. The packaging is not working very well. And then I got three blushes. They have three shades. I got Berry Plum. Uh, pink Blush is the shade name. And then I got this other one called Toast, which is more of a terracotta. Now, Toast has some shimmer in it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but there's some little flecks of gold. But this pink and the berry plum look like they're satin or matte. There's no actual like shimmer on those. So I have those three. And then I did manage to find a highlighter. They had this Ioni stand and they had a bunch of lashes that looked really nice and lash glue. I just picked up one of the highlighters. It doesn't have, it just says highlighting face highlight. Brighten and shine, soft texture, long lasting, cloud nine. It doesn't have a shade that I can see unless cloud nine is the shade. I don't know. There's a 600WS12, but it's a pretty champagne color. LA Colors did have some like bronzers that were pretty rectangular and flat. They had a shimmer and a matte, but they looked a little bit too deep. They were deeper than this one. And then they did have a highlighter and kind of a rose gold, but it was very dark. So I got excited when I saw this one, like the end cap was down on the floor. They didn't have a spot for it. So I think people were walking around it because generally the light shades of things at my dollar store go pretty quick. Cause like I said, they predominantly carry deep shades here. And I think that's a problem at most dollar stores. If they do have shades, it's like one shade of something. I just don't live in an area where I get lucky with complexion. Every once in a while, I'll see light shades, but uh, most of the foundation and concealer that I've ever seen there has been dark. And they did have the serum foundation and the concealer. I forget. It's a new brand to Dollar Tree. Emily Noel used the foundation when she did a video recently because they actually had a shade that worked for her. The first thing that's not makeup, we need some detangling spray for the kids. So I tried this Equate Baby. It's been a very long time since I've had to purchase detangling spray. My oldest daughter is 16. So I'm pretty sure I used it when she was little, but the girls haven't needed it until now. Their hair is getting long. So we'll try this one. It was like two bucks. Suave makes one and Dove makes one. Okay, I got an assortment of things. There's some hard candy, some Maybelline, a Profusion, um, something from AF94, which is about Face's sister brand. So I got this um, 
pair of lashes. I wanted pink, and apparently this is one of the things that they substituted. So they gave me blue. So they have a little bit of blue on them. So those are cute. Like I said, I picked pink. They obviously didn't have pink. And then they had to substitute the Physician's Formula marker pen because I wanted to get one like the NYX to try it. And they gave me the pencil. I knew they did some substitutions, but I didn't know exactly what had been substituted. My husband approved the substitution. So I'm going to have to go in and order the marker. I'll see if I can get it online. And then I think everything else is correct. I got another blush from Profusion. I have one in kind of a neutral shade. I got this one in a pink. It's just in the shade Rose. So there's that. And then I got one of Hard Candy's blushes. I got the shade Born Yesterday. So there's that. And then I also got one of their gel bronzers in Honey Glaze. I think I got, I wanted the shade Chocolate Chip and they substituted me this shade. So that's fine. That shade I think will work. I got one of the hard candies. This is this Sheer Envy Instant Eye Fixer. I used to, I still have it. I think it's old. I used to get the one from Garnet and it's just a roller. It has a little bit of tint in it. it it's an anti-dark circle corrector. It's got caffeine and some other ingredients in it. Mine's old, so I'm gonna throw mine away. This is the same kind of product where it's got a little bit of a tint. It's got some ingredients vitamin B, caffeine, and green tea, so it can help depuff, but the corrector offers a little bit of color correcting, and it's a very, it should be a thin formula. The Garnet one is, so I'm hoping this one is too. Very, very thin, so it doesn't disrupt concealer or anything. I have a color corrector from Pixie that's in a pot, but this is a little bit thicker, so if you put too much of this on, it can make your concealer look bad. Whereas something like this, as thin as this is, isn't really going to do that. So it's been a while since I've used something like this. I forgot about my Garnier one. So I picked that up. And then I ended up, they were supposed to give me a pink and a green. So I will keep one of these and give it to a friend of mine because I don't need two in the same color. So... I don't know. This is in moods. It's just one of their little four pan. I wanted to try it. Like I said, I got selected the green and the pink, but apparently they only had pink. And then I got this palette. Emily Noel has recommended this. This is the Nudes of New York, and they happen to have it in stock from Maybelline. So I got that to try. So yeah, that is everything that I picked up. Let me know what you thought. Is there anything that you want to see me use first? Let me know. Leave those comments down below. And yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everybody.